continuing where I left off of the Aeneid. Book 2, How They Took the City. The room fell silent, and all eyes were on him, as Father Aeneas from his high couch began. Sorrow too deep to tell, your majesty. You ordered me to feel and tell once more how the Danans leveled in the dust, the splendor of our mourn forever kingdom, heartbreaking things I saw with my own eyes and was myself a part of. Who could tell them, even a Myrmidon or a Delopian or a ruffian of Ulysses without tears? Now, too, the night is well along with dewfall out of heaven and setting stars way down our heads toward sleep. But if so great desire moves you to hear the tale of our disasters, briefly recall the final throes of Troy. However, I may shudder at the memory and shrink again in grief. Let me begin. Knowing their strength broken in warfare, turned back by the fates, and years so many years already slipped away, the Danans' captains, by the divine handicraft of Pallas, built a horse of timber tall as a hill, and sheathed its ribs with planking of cut pine. This they gave out to be an offering. For a safe return by sea, and the word went round. But on that slyly, they shut inside a company, chosen from their picked soldiery by lot, crowding the vaulted caverns in the dark, the horse's belly, with men fully armed. Offshore, there is a long island to natives, famous and rich, while Priam's kingdom lasted, a treacherous anchorage now, and nothing more. They crossed to this, and hid their ships behind it, on the bare shore beyond. We thought they gone, sailing home to Mycenae before the wind. So Teucer's town is freed of her long anguish, gates thrown wide, and out we go in joy to see the Dorian campsites all deserted, the beach left behind. Here the Lopians pitched their tents, here cruel Achilles lodged, there, there lay the ships, and there formed up in ranks. They came inland to fight us. Of our men, one group stood marveling, gaping up to see the dire gift of the old unbedded goddess, the sheer mass of the horse. Diomede shouts it should have been hauled inside the walls and moored high on the cytotel, whether by treason or just because Troy's fate went that way now. Capes opposed him. So did the wiser heads. Into the sea with it, they said, or burn it. Build upon a fire on it. The trick of the Greeks, a gift no one can trust. Or cut it open, search the hollow belly. Contrary notions pull the crowd apart. Next thing we knew in front of everyone, Lacoon with a great company, came furiously running from the height, and still far off cried out, O oh, my poor people, men of Troy. What madness has come over you? Can you believe the enemy truly gone? A gift from the Danans and no ruse? Is that Ulysses' way as you know him? Archians must be hiding in this timber, or it was built to butt against our walls, peer over them into our houses, pelt the city from the sky. Some crookedness is in this thing. Have no faith in the horse. Whatever it is, even when Greeks bring gifts, I fear them, gifts and all. Here broke off then, and rifled his big spear with all his might against the horse's flank, the curve of a belly. It struck there trembling, and the rounded hull reverberated, groaning at the blow. If the gods will have not been sinister, if our minds had not been praised, he would have made us Foul that Argive den with bloody steel, and Troy would stand today. O Cytotel Prim, towering still. But now look, Hillmen, shepherds of Dardanian, raising a shout, dragged in before the king, an unknown fellow with hands to tie behind. This, as he himself had planned, volunteering, letting them come across him, so he could open Troy to the Archians. Sure, 
of himself this man prays for it either way to work his trick or die from every quarter trojans run to see him ring the prison around and make a game of jeering at him be instructed now in greek deceptive arts one barefaced deed can tell you of them all as the man stood there shaken and defenseless looking around at ranks of phrygians phrygians oh god he said what land on earth what seas can take me in what's left me in the end outcast that i am from the danans now the dardanians will have my blood the whimpering speech brought us up short we felt a twinge for him let him speak up we said tell us where he was born what news he brought what he could hope for as a prisoner taking his time slow to discard his fright he said i'll tell you the whole truth my lord no matter what may come of it argive i am by birth and will not say i'm not that first of all fortune made a de derelict of sinon but the bitch won't make an empty lie of him too report of palamedes may have reached you scion of glubius line a famous man who gave commands against the war for this on a trumped-up charge on purge testimony the greeks put him to death but now they mourn him now he has lost the light being kin, kin to him in my first years i joined him as a companion sent by my poor old father on the campaign and while he held high rank and influence in royal consuls we did well with honor then by the guile and envy of ulysses nothing unheard of there he left this world and i live on but under a cloud in sorrow raging for my blameless friend's downfall demented too i cannot hold my peace but said if i had luck if i have won through again to argos i avenge him there and i roused hatred with my talk i fell afoul now of that man from that time on day in day out Ulysses found new ways to bait and terrify me, putting out shady rumors among the troops, looking for weapons he could use against me. He could not rest till Calchas served his turn, but why go on? The tales unwelcome, useless, if Aetians are all one, and it's enough I'm called Aetians, then exact the punishment, long overdue. The Ithacan desires it. The Artridae would pay well for it. Burning with curiosity, we questioned him, called on him to explain, unable to conceive such a performance, the art of the Pelasgidian. He went on, a tremble, as though he feared us. Many times the Danes wished to organize retreat, to leave Troy and the long war, tired out, if only they had done it. Heavy weather at sea closed down on them, for a fresh gale from the southwest would keep them from embarking. Most of all, after this figure here this horse they put together with maple beams reached its full height then wind and thunderstorms rumbled in heaven so in our quandary we went irreplaceless to phoebus oracle and he brought back this reply blood and a virgin slain you gave to appease the wind for your first voyage troy word o danans blood again and archive blood one life wins your return when this got round among the soldiers, gloomed came over them, and a cold chill that ran to the very morrow. Who had death in the store? Whom did Apollo call for? Now the man of Ithaca held Calchas out among us in tumult, calling on the seer to tell the true will of the gods. Ah, there were many able to divine the crookedness and cruelty of foot for me, but they looked on in silence. For ten days the seer kept still, kept under cover, would not speak of anyone or name a man for death, till driven to it at last by Ulysses' cries, by prearrangement he broke silence, barely enough to designate me for the altar. Every last man agreed. agreed. The torment each had feared for himself now shifted to another. All could endure, and the famous day came. And I'm going to leave it off there. So... Um, if you have any comments, please uh, comment, uh, like it if you like it, or share it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.